Hey everyone, it's Curly at Vanguard, and I've got another deck profile for you today. We're going to be doing things a little bit differently today. As you can see, I don't have the face cam and all that stuff, but uh, let's go ahead and see how this goes. We're going to be talking about one of the, I guess, collab sets that we have here in Overdress. This is going to be a Kashu Kiyomitsu Kiwame deck profile. So as I mentioned, this is a collab set with Token Rambu, which from my understanding is some sort of web browser based game. I don't actually know, I keep forgetting to look up, and I think I was already told before, <laughs> what the sort of game entails, but in any case, none of that matters. Uh, I do know that this did have a collab with Vanguard in the past, in a different format, but we managed to get it back here in Overdress now. So far there's been just one trial deck released as well as one set. I believe so far they haven't announced if anything else is going to be released but there is a promo card that was released so maybe there's some hope. We'll go over that promo in a little bit. Hey it's Curly Red Vanguard from the future. While editing this I forgot to bring up the actual promo I was talking about. There's actually four of them but the one I actually wanted to talk about is this one here. On back roll, rear guard circle he gets 5k and can boost if you have four or more units on board. I've seen this on a lot of Japanese lists. It's a pretty decent card. I thought it was actually a lot better the first time I saw it, but it's actually just kind of decent. So let's go over Kiwami here. He is the main boss unit from the trial deck. Overall, I think there is about six. So it's very similar to the like the lyrical set where there's just six different boss units that you can play around with. This is the one from the trial deck. He is a very sort of... Um, Oracle Think Tanky playstyle, in that his sort of playstyle revolves around two things. One, being able to look at the top card of your deck and manipulating, you know, the top one or two cards of your deck. And two, in that whenever there is no face up cards in your damage, so you have no counter blast that you can use, he actually gets powered up. So those are his two skills here. During your turn, if you have no face-up cards in your damage zone, he gets 10,000 power. So already have Persona Ride numbers with that. Then once per turn, you can counter blast, Soul Blast one, and look at the top card of your deck and put that on either the top or bottom of your deck, and then you draw a card. So this is really cool. Uh, if you have a trigger, you can, unfortunately, you don't have to put it down because you do draw a card after that. But if, for example, you have a card that you don't want, uh, you can put it at the bottom of your deck, or if you have a card that maybe you need in your hand, you can very easily draw it. So basically, this either becomes Counter Blast, Soul Blast, draw a card, or becomes Counter Blast, Soul Blast, manipulate your stack a little bit, and then still draw a card, right? So it's pretty solid, and that's basically what the deck sort of focuses on, is making sure that your, you know, your trigger checks are going to be triggers, and uh, using up a bunch of uh, counter blast for a bunch of uh, effects that will then power up your vanguard and make them really big. Let's go ahead and go over the ride deck here. The grade zero just lets you draw for going second. The grade one, if you ride the grade two over it, you can actually look at the top card of your deck and either keep it on the top of your deck or put it into your soul, which is very interesting because uh, you do need a lot of soul specifically for you know your main vanguard's ability, but a lot of other cards that you can use. So it is nice that this just gives you automatically soul charge one, or you can also put a trigger at the bottom of your deck, or sorry, leave a trigger on the top of your deck and then go ahead and check that that turn. Then finally, there is the grade two, where once you ride the uh, grade three over him, you can actually search your deck for one of these cards, which we'll go over in a little bit, and add that to your hand. Um, so that is actually pretty solid, because uh, just from the right line alone, you kind of plus two already, which is very good. And then the Yasuda is actually a very good combo piece for this deck. Very quickly, we'll go over the triggers. So we are going to be playing a lot of crits, the maximum amount possible actually in eight, because since you can actually manipulate your stack, you can get your crits whenever you kind of want them, right? Uh, you can definitely play some fronts. I think that's pretty valid. You can sort of like attack first with your Vanguard, 
but there are some attacks that need to happen in order for you to be able to counter blast and then be able to, for example, power up your Vanguard. So it kind of really depends on how you want to play it. Um, the trigger lineup is kind of whatever. I would say maybe not too many draws. I am playing three of them here just to make sure I can get some of the pieces that I need. But you can definitely swap this out for fronts. I don't think draws are absolutely necessary. And then, of course, as usual, we're going to be playing four heals and um, four of the sort of new PG. Since this is one of the newer sets that was released, they don't have any like effect criticals, effect draws, effect fronts, or anything like that. So we're just playing vanillas of everything. The only thing that is different, however, is their over trigger. So it's not like a normal trigger. Uh, it's actually a trigger order, which is very interesting. So this has its pluses and minuses. Obviously, when you check it, you still get the 100 million power, you draw, remove this card, but you give all of your units a critical. So if you drive, check it during your turn, this is pretty sick, right? Um, while on the other side, it does have the downside in that it doesn't have any shield value. Um, so it's somewhat of a dead card in hand, as are many other orders. However, you can play it because it is an order after all. When you play it, you can give your Vanguard a critical. And if you have five or more cards, or I don't know if it says five or more, you'd be dead. <laughs> You're not playing Greed on. But if you have five or more cards in your damage, you can give all of your units 10,000 power, which is huge. And a lot of your units already gain power on, on themselves, not to mention the fact that you can stack your deck and get a bunch of triggers on them. So this is a really good order. Um, or I should say over trigger, more specifically. You're more than welcome to play the Cray Elemental, which gives two of your units 100 million power in case you want maybe the extra 50k shield, which I guess is valuable. But uh, this order is still pretty solid, especially specifically in this deck. So for the grade ones, uh, we're going to be playing six of them. First up here, we have the Fudo Yukimitsu here. This is a rather simple card. It's actually from the Trial deck. Once per turn, it's an axe skill. You can Candle Blast one. Look at the top card of your deck and put it on the top or bottom. And if you put it at the bottom, this unit gets 2,000 power. Going to be playing three of these. It just, you know, lets you check top card. Um, and that's really it. <laughs> it's a pretty simple effect. It's an axe skill. It's not on place. You can keep using it as 8k power. It's not like 7k or anything like that, which is great. So it's a really nice solid card. The last grade one we're going to play here is the Manoyoshi Sadamune. So this unit is very interesting. While it is a grade one with 7k power, whenever you put a trigger on this unit, the power buff for a trigger, it actually doubles. So instead of getting 10k, it becomes 20 The reason we play this over many of the other grade ones that are pretty solid is because more often than not, we're going to know when we're going to check triggers. And we're going to be able to manipulate our stack to make sure that we actually get those triggers. Which means this is going to be a huge, huge attacker or booster. Uh, well, actually, no, only booster, because only in the back row. So this unit is going to be very, very powerful to help you out. And I think, you know, this deck is the best to use this card in, because, again, you can manipulate your stack, so you might as well play as many of them as you can. Next up, we have the Grade 2 that we had mentioned earlier. This is the Yamamoto no Kami Yasuda. This is actually from the Tron deck, and it is a very interesting card. As I mentioned before, this is searched from the ride deck whenever you ride over the grade 2 with the grade 3. You can add this to your hand. Um, then, this actually has a very, very useful skill for this deck, where on Rearguard Circle, an Axe skill, you can counter blast 1, and this unit gets 5,000 power. But, if your Vanguard is Kiwami, which is the main grade 3 for this build, you get instead 10,000 power. So this is going to be a 20k attacker. However, this is not once per turn. So you can do two things with this. You can use up all of your counter blasts in order to power up this one unit. And then in addition to that, you'll actually power up your Vanguard. Because once you don't have any face up cards in your damage zone, your Vanguard is a 23k attacker, which is really good. So this is very good for just, you know, getting rid of your extra counter blast, which I know sounds like a very weird thing to say, but that's just kind of how this deck works. Uh, so it's nice that you can just do it one at a time, however many you want during one turn. Next up, we have another grade 2 here in the Shoku Daikiri Mitsuda. So there's a lot of good grade 2s in this whole nation, clan, sets, whatever you want to call it. They're all super solid. 
and you can kind of use any of them or most of them in any of these builds. I decided to go with this card here because essentially what this does is when I place this from hand, if my opponent is at grade 3 or greater, I can counter blast 1, get my front home 5k power. It's a nice buff to my front row and it's a way to use my counter blast. And that's essentially what it comes down to is to how you choose what to run in this deck is how you're going to use your counter blast. He also has a second skill which could be kind of useful if you hit vanguard you can soul blast one and choose one of your opponent's rear guards that's in the front row and retire it. So there is a little bit of control, there is a build um, or I should say there is a boss unit that kind of focuses on retiring so you can play this however you want. Kiwam is the most flexible because his sort of ability and condition don't really rely a lot on any of your other cards. So you can, for example, put in a bunch of cards like this, which lets you retire and have a more control-like build, since, you know, having no counter blast actually ends up helping your vanguard in the end, and you can even then power up your units by checking your uh, triggers that you can sort of stack, so. Likewise, we're going to be playing three of another, one of the triple rare grade two here. This is the Mikazuki Munichika. This is actually the cover art for the set. Um, by the way, <laughs> uh, we did do an opening for this uh, over on the channel. You'll have that, you'll see that somewhere in the iCard uh, up, up, here, up, up, up here somewhere <laughs> and in the description down below because I did actually open up all these cards on the uh, channel but in any case uh the mikazuki mune chika is actually very interesting um so depending on how many cards you have in your damage you can activate all of the following effects in order if you have three or more you get 5k so that's not bad if you have four or more you can actually look at the top card of your deck and put it on the top or bottom of your deck very good helps this deck out a lot then if you have five or more you can counter blast soul blast and stand this unit so this is really amazing and this is one of the reasons why I don't think you need to play the Cray Elemental over trigger because you can try and go for a big push on your grade or sorry when you're at five damage uh, where you use this to power up your units. Uh, this plus a Persona right plus maybe even the previous guy that we just showed that powers up your front row right so that's five plus five plus 10, plus no, Persona Ride 10, that's a good chunky 30 plus. That's a 40k rearguard that can attack twice and also check the top card of your deck and um, help out your Vanguard. So I think this is a very useful card. However, it is something that's kind of like a dead card early on. It's really only really useful once you're at four damage specifically. Uh, before then, you know, it being a 15k attacker is nice, but it doesn't really give you a lot of value until really late game. Which is why I'm only playing three. You might even be better off playing only two of them. Um, since usually you're really only going to be able to use that last effect once in the entire game. Unless a miracle happens. Um, so three might be a bit much, but that's up to you. Next up, our next yellow shiny card here is going to be the Suda Sukru Maru Kuninaga here. This is a very interesting card, and this is one of the cards that made me want to build this uh, deck specifically. So what this does, this is a great tier. At the end of this battle, at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, doesn't have to hit. If your opponent's vanguard is grade 3 or greater, counter blast 1, soul blast 1, Choose one of your rear guys in the same column as this unit and swap its position with this unit. So what this does is it gives you multi-attack. Uh, that sounds really good to me. <laughs> I don't know exactly how, for example, this works with, for example, this card. Because it says that in the back row, if its attack would be increased, you double the increase. But if I have it in the back row and then I switch, um, since I'm not applying a trigger at that point, the trigger is already applied, I'm assuming its power should stay huge. Alright, so that is an option for that, but what I'll mostly be using or planning on using this card for, or with I should say, is this here, the Okirigara. This is another great two here, we're going to be playing two copies of this. Uh, when this unit attacks, while not boosted, if your opponent's vanguard is greater through greater, counter blast 1. And this unit gets 10,000 power to the end of that battle. If you have no face up cards in your damage zone, however, it becomes 15 instead of 10. Which is, you know, very good. 
Don't need to boost. Can't boost if this guy's in the back row. Then we swap them out. Can't boost because this guy's in the bass row. Back row. Bass row. Back row. And then you go ahead and counter blast and make this guy really huge. I think that's a really nice little combo. Uh, once I saw that, I really wanted to build this deck and I actually decided not to do it and played a slightly different build of this deck. And then lately, I just came back to this and started playing this variant and I'm actually pretty happy with it so far. Finally, we have two more grade twos here. Um, we have these two guys here, uh, one, two and one of each. This is the Hitsukiri Hasabe. This is from the trial deck. Um, this lets you look at the top two cards of your deck and put them in back on your deck or back on the top of your deck any order. This is great, but not as great just because um, if uh, there's stuff you don't like, there's nothing you can really do about it, <laughs> especially if you're on your grade three, right? You're gonna end up checking both of those cards anyway, so they're just not triggers. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can definitely play a third one of these. I actually ended up swapping it out for some of the other cards that I just showed. Um, you can also swap out this card if you want. Um, I want to play another one of these, but I only managed to pull one somehow. Um, this is the Kuan Go. So when this hits Vanguard, you can either counter charge or solo charge too. Um, so even though the purpose of this deck is to use up all of your counter blast, there may be times when you want to use <laughs> your counter blast. So I figured I'd might as well try and throw in a way where I need I, I can actually get some counter charge. I'll be honest with you, it's yet to actually come up. But uh, again, you can definitely swap that out for like another one of these or another one of the other cards. Finally, for the only grade three we're gonna be playing, it's gonna be three of our main Vanguard here. Just so we can Persona Ride. You know, it's pretty easy to hit Persona Ride. We have the draws to try and get them. We can, you know, manipulate our stack to see if we can try and get it, send anything else to the bottom. Um, getting a huge 33k Vanguard is very good as well. So I don't see any reason why not to play the Persona Ride. So ideally, in the best scenario, you wanna get into a situation where you're on your grade three Vanguard here. You can pull up your Mikazuki throw away maybe a Sadamune back there and then slap down your Kinonaga and then either the Yasuda or the Kata here um, and you can do a very huge push on your uh, more or less final turn when you're at five damage here let's say you go ahead and you Persona Ride draw until let's say you're over trigger which you can then play and uh, that will basically give you these huge massive numbers here uh, because your whole front row is gonna have 10k every other unit is also gonna get an additional 10k from the over trigger here let's say you just happen to play that at five um, and if you have the counter blast you can actually do a lot here so you can for example attack here check the top card of your deck stand this unit again you can attack here Go ahead and counter blast, soul blast, move this up, counter blast with this, make him huge, attack with this, get a bunch of triggers on this guy here, swing in here again for massive numbers. Um, so the main thing basically with this deck is to just try your best to make sure you use your counter blast effectively. That is to say, you have to do two things. You have to know when to guard and attack, because you need counter blasts to really move all along. And you need to know when to actually use that counter blast. As nice as it may be to every turn, just go ahead and counter blast one or two in order to activate your Vanguard's main skill. Um, if you're not really going to do a lot that turn, maybe that's not the best idea. So you really just got to be very careful sort of what you do with this deck. Uh, this deck is obviously not super powerful, and um, I'm not going to lie here and tell you that it, this is one of the best decks that's ever been created, and I went 5,500-0 and 0 in my local tournament, which was just me and a dog or whatever. But it is a really fun deck. Alright, before we go ahead and wrap up, let's just go over some additional options here. Uh, we have the Ishikini Maru from the start deck. This is a grade 3 that if you have no face-up cards, he actually gets 5k power, so he's an 18k attacker. 
he's okay. Um, I don't really see him worth playing per se. Here's a grade one from the set that I thought was really interesting. Uh, this is the Kenshin Kagemitsu. At the end of the battle that this unit boosted, Counter Blast 1 puts this into the soul, draw a card. Choose one of your units and it gets 2000 power. So you can play this instead of the guy that gets double triggers. Uh, he does let you draw, he gives you soul, and you can counter blast, which again is something you kind of need to do in this deck. So I think this is a very valid option, I just kind of liked the um, trigger guy a lot more. And speaking of replacements, you can replace the uh, grade 1 from the Stark deck with the Huga Masamune here. She did, basically does the same thing on place. If your Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, you can look at the top deck, the top card of your deck, and put it at the bottom or the top of your deck. This doesn't cost Counter Blast, but it's only on place. So if you want to maybe use your Counter Blast on other stuff and then have a definitive way to be able to, you know, check the top card of your deck, this is one of the ways you can do that instead of using the other card. I typically don't even use the Counter Blast or the other card, but it is nice that I can use it whenever I want, because it is an Axe skill. Um, so, I could honestly probably see myself trying this one out instead and see how that goes. Then there's this unit that I was really interested in when I first saw it. Essentially what this does is your Vanguard is being attacked. You can actually Soul Blast and have this guard be in your guard's Guardian Circle. So it's not technically an intercept, but it's essentially an intercept that you can do from like the back row or something like that with a grade one, which is uh, really interesting. But you kind of need your soul for some of your other cards and you really don't have a lot of ways to build up your soul. So if you're going to use this, you would have to maybe use it in combination with like this guy, which I think would be really interesting. Again, I... It, really is up to you. The draw might be a little bit painful. If you stack some really good cards, you don't really want to draw, and that's, that's up to you. Then last but not least, we're going to go over the Shinju Shi Shishio here, which is a very funny card. Um, it has resist. Uh, it is a great 2 with resist, but it is unfortunately 8k. And if your Vanguard's attack hits, you can Counter Blast, Soul Blast, draw a card, and give this unit 5k. Which does make it a 13k attacker to the end of that turn. If you checked, you can put your triggers on him, make it even bigger. Your opponent can't get rid of them with effects, but they can definitely very easily attack into it with a grade 1. I kind of wish this was 9k at least. So at least they had to attack into it with a grade 2, which made a little bit more sense. But I don't think that really makes too much of a huge difference. Nonetheless, uh, it is an option that you can play. I don't think it's very good, but if... Again, if for some reason you do need resist, you do have an option. So that is the deck. Please let me know what you guys think if you have been playing Token Rambu. Um, let me know if you have any variations on this build. Um, if you haven't been playing Token Rambu, I would suggest you give it a shot. At first, I didn't really care a lot about it because I don't know anything about any of these cards or any of these, you know, characters or anything like that but the actual set itself is kind of interesting i really like the sort of flexibility of all of these side sets where you can have all of these different boss units but you can use any of the cards in any of those decks and it's just really really fun but in any case let me know what you think in the comments down below and until next time take care of yourself